Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we'll be talking about BBC Sherlock and what made it so popular. Now, some of you might say, oh, it's not popular anymore. It's more like infamous now, foo foo. You gotta, you gotta make sense. Um, I'd like to disagree because there's still a massive fucking fandoms rolling around, you know, in Tumblr, Twitter, everywhere else. Holy fuck. Whenever you look up Sherlock as in hashtag Sherlock, all you see is BBC Sherlock or Sherlock Holmes. That's the guy you see, Benedict Cumberbini. But anyway, um, before we begin into the content, the actual meat of the video, I'd like to apologize for one thing. Check this out. Oh yeah, I have laser eyes. Isn't this great? Um, I'm trying a new setup because last time it just wasn't going really smooth and I'm also trying this new thing where I don't do any script. Well, I do a script just that is more in bullet points than paragraphs because <laughs> I feel like I would get my opinion a bit m smoother across compared to like reading off a script and more naturally. I guess that's it for introductions. Welcome to the video. Hope you enjoy your stay. I'm your host Fufu and this is Unhinged Opinion. Um, not exactly an opinion this time because I actually did some research. Oh yeah, some epic research with Google Forms. Now I asked a bunch of people on Tumblr and on some Discord servers. I was like, hey yo, can you like fill out this form? It has a bunch of questions ranging from like, what made you think BBC Sherlock got so popular? Like, you know, that thing boomed. It, it made the internet explode. Holy shit, I'm using boomer language. Fuck me. But anyway, it asked like a bunch of stuff like, what is your favorite episode? Did it trigger any nostalgia in you if you watch it today? And, 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 and other stuff, another stuff, which we will get into in this video. And that is finally it for introductions. Let's get into the meat. First, a bit of background for those who are uninitiated. I've done a quick introduction to the canon in my previous video. If you're into that and are interested in what made Granada Holmes great, link is in the description. However, I must warn you, it is highly opinionated. Anyways, background on BBC Sherlock, also known as just Sherlock or Sherlock 2010, starts Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Dr. John Watson. This show is set in London in the current era. The way the story starts is very similar to the canon, in which John just came back from the war and he's He's devastated, he's looking for a flatmate, and he's just wandering around London, and suddenly, by sheer coincidence, he met Stamford. And John just explained to him like, Ayo bro, I kinda, I'm kinda looking for a flatmate, I'm hella broke, I, I need help. And Stamford was like, Ayo, you're not the first one to tell me today. So he was like, Ayo, there's this junkie just down the road who's also looking for one. Let's go meet him in a hospital lab. You Gucci with that? And John was like, Ayo, oh my god, let's go, totally. And so Stanford introduced John to Sherlock and they introduced each other. The next thing you know, they're moving in like a romantic couple. Even Mrs. Hudson couldn't deny that. Sherlock invites John to a crime scene and there they go studying Scarlet Begins. It's not it's not studying Scarlet, it's, it's studying the pink. It's more of a fuchsia if you ask me, but so I guess studying pink will do. Just 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 kidding, just kidding. Ah! And so they solve crime together and be gay together, but the writers said don't be gay. So they weren't too gay, but you know what I'm talking about. Queer baiting. Hell yeah. My favorite TV trope. It's sarcasm. It's sarcasm, guys. It's it's sarcasm. Get that. Okay, thank you very much. So you made it this far. All right, two minutes and great job, guys. Anyways, let's get into the first question of the G forms. What made you think BBC Sherlock is slash was great? And the description for this particular question is, you can give a long or short answer, but it'd be nice if you could tell in detail what made you think it's great. 
Perhaps you like the cinematography, the writing, the actors, maybe how they treat some shots, etc, etc. And so, from that question alone, I've drawn up a few conclusions. Eight conclusions, to be exact. And that is, number one, the relationship between John and Sherlock is absolutely amazing. People think Benedict Cumberbatch is hot. Number three, queer baiting. Don't we all love queer baiting? Ooh, it's the best thing in the world. Oh, baby. Number four, cool editing. Number five, cool writing. To credit Moftis, they structured some episodes well and okay i mean like modern era concept is pretty cool yeah cool writing cool 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 anyway let's get into number six cool writing part two which is more towards crediting arthur conan doyle for basically starting up like this mystery first and then moftis kind of Adapted that? Yeah. And then number seven, impressionable young tweens and teens. And I was part of the, I was part of that demographic. I'm not ashamed at all. It's part of the past. No one gives a shit. But because of this impressionable young teens and tweens demographic, in a later question I did ask whether or not it triggers any sense of nostalgia, which a lot actually responded with yes. And the eighth would be modern. It's sick. It's cool, it's new, there's smartphones, and there's remotely detonable bombs. Can I say that on YouTube? I think I can. Let's just roll with it. Oh, and, and cars, and, and Blackberry Messenger, whoa, dude, 2010, yeah. Yeah. So, second question is, what is your favorite episode? And you can pick more than one. Now, the responses. It's super interesting because, hear me out, 67.2% of respondents, that is 41 out of 61 of respondents, picked Study in Pink as their favorite episode. Number two is The Hounds of Baskerville, which took 27 out of 61 respondents and that is a 44.3 percent of 61 respondents that is utterly insane to me now if you look at the graph it's it's a slide all the way down from the first episode to the last episode holy fucking shit bro but that is besides the point maybe that is the point because this show did took a really bad nosedive yeah. Fuck, dude, I feel bad now. Rip. Question number three. Anything you would like to change from the show? In the show? Yes! 91.8% of people said yes. Facts? Can't- Data can't lie. Okay, so this next question, it is related to the previous question, and that is, what would you like to change in the show? I only asked those people who said yes, and when I say only, that is 56 out of 61 respondents. <laughs> and this is what I drew up from all those responses. 
That is number one. Fourth season and yours homes just do not make sense. No logic whatsoever. The supernatural aspects of yours being able to like predict everything. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. And then number two, ending of season three. Nobody like that. How dare you throw away the beautiful gifts you were born with? And how dare you betray the love of your friends? Say you're sorry. Moving on. Number three, personality shift. John and Sherlock, they were so cute together in the beginning. And then now they don't connect with each other. And then br 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 br. What? Just, just what did you do to them? They were like boyfriend material and then suddenly they're like bickering all the fucking time and then number four women they do not treat their women characters that well except for mrs h but mrs h is like always treated well and, and i love mrs h holy shit bbc mrs h is my favorite but anyway they killed off mary in the worst possible way I can still surprise you. Now, come on, be sensible. No, I don't think so. <laughs> surprise. And they treated Irene Adler. <laughs> <laughs> they just they don't treat her at all they, they mistreat her holy shit uh, this is connected to the to number four and that is number five let the lesbian be a lesbian now irene adler in bbc sherlock she's supposed to be an, she's supposed to be a lesbian oh no the first pretty boy she meets oh she's not into sherlock <laughs> that way <laughs> she's into him because oh he's so smart smart as the new sexy oh yeah just guys that is not that is not how it works i i i know that you try to be like, oh, she's a lesbian, but because Sherlock is just so charming and so smart that she just falls straight into his bedroom. Oh, get some pussy. I'm gonna get banned in my first, not first video, my second video. Six. Plot makes no sense. That is writing. And we can say that this is related to the ending of season three as well the entirety of season four. Cause cause I mean the plot still kinda does make sense in season two, but after watching it over and over and over for this goddamn video. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's not, it's not, it's not there yet. And then number seven, um, don't be an ableist. So I had to ask some help on this particular topic that is ableism because I don't consider myself to be disabled and I'm quite sure I am in no way qualified to talk about this topic with no reference at all. So I asked my good friend Teddy to discuss this topic and I will be reading out the Discord messages that he sent because I find them quite interesting. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to cover everything that we talked about because this video has already been going on for long enough. But anyways, let's get into it. So this is what Teddy had to say. The ableism in this show with John isn't very clear at first because he does use a cane, as he does in the books. And his pain and limp are pretty visible so they aren't hiding it like some adaptations have done? The issue starts with that one deduction that because he didn't ask for a seat, his pain wasn't that severe, and thus psychosomatic. Your lips really bad when you walk. You don't ask for a chair when you stand like you've forgotten about it. So it's at least partly psychosomatic. That says the original circumstances of the injury were traumatic, wounded in action then. Wounded in action, Suntan, Afghanistan, or Iraq. You said I had a therapist. You've got a psychosomatic limp, of course you've got a therapist. 
Psychosomatic doesn't mean the pain isn't physical, just that the cause isn't physical. Usually you get pain because you get hurt, but your brain might get confused at seeing a psychological symptom and go, that's really bad, we should probably be feeling some pain right now. And you end up with a stomach pain because you were depressed or worse. So John is absolutely in pain either way, he just doesn't have a physical origin for it, like a shot to the leg or shoulder. This whole thing with psychosomatic symptoms are less bad is actually even worse than the other stuff because it's generally harmful and doctors use this constantly to dismiss patients who might have a physical problem that can cause the brain to fire a signal to another entirely different place, causing a psychosomatic symptom. Or maybe it's solely psychological, but it still needs to be checked if, I don't know, you're feeling pain on your back because of anxiety? Also, it's kind of awkward for some people to ask to sit down because of chronic pain or a disability, especially with strangers. Sure, with his cane, it'd be really shitty if someone refused that, but John has probably faced some shit before and won't risk it with a dude who was just whipping a corpse. So we covered John, now let's cover Sherlock, because he too is an ableist nightmare. And this is what Teddy has to say about that. High functioning sociopath scene is very bad, even if he isn't disabled or neurodivergent. High functioning is not a very good term used to describe people with autism usually. Mostly it means that the person can function in society or appear not autistic on the outside. Some people with autism and other conditions use this term for themselves, same with low functioning, because it's what describes their experiences. But it's mostly agreed in the community that able and neurotypical people shouldn't use it on people without knowing first if they use these labels or not. Sure, maybe Sherlock does generally use these labels for himself, but it doesn't seem like a good writing choice. Knowing who the writers are, and most people usually avoid these terms anyway, so it's not very realistic. The sociopath bit is even worse because it's a very derogatory term that's harmful to several different disorders and conditions. Since he's likely meant to be autistic, the usage of the word implies that his autism makes him cold, uncaring, and potentially violent. Since those are the traits attributed to the word, which are all very harmful preconceptions people have about autism. If he isn't meant to have something else, still the implications with the usage of that term gives a bad connotation to whatever condition he has and his symptoms. Just putting these terms together in one sentence written by able neurotypical people is very very bad, straight up harmful. It also probably means in this context that because he functions in society, that's why he isn't a murderer, which is another implication of that term. And then number eight. This is this is not like oh, one of the aspects, but I just really like this. I just really like this comment. Yeah. Um, the characterization of Watson is utterly wrong. They made him a repressed homophobic bisexual, when in reality, the truest form of his being is that he loves Sherlock and he would never hurt him. The characterization of Holmes also lacks. He feels more emotions than he lets on and is softer than they portray him to be. Also, if BBC wanted to be groundbreaking, they would have stood up to the Conan Doyle estates and made Holmes and Watson explicitly romantic together, and risked the outrage slash suing it would have caused. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree to setting up to the Conan Doyle estate. Yeah, that, that, that estate is just holy shit, dude. You gotta sue left and right. Have you heard of Herlock Sholmes <laughs> from the great Ace Attorney? <laughs> now there's this other comment and it says the Granada Home series got a lot right. Mainly the apparent and undebatable love between Holmes and Watson. The RDJ movies are a ploy to get man boys to watch hot, interesting action movies without having to risk questioning their own sexualities, similar to BBC Sherlock. Ayo, bro, you're not wrong, but you got you don't you don't gotta hurt me like that, be bitch. 
RDJ, RDJ Holmes is my favorite adaptation. And I guess, I guess I do have man baby taste in, in film. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. Counter with cross to left cheek. Discombobulate. Okay, so in the next question, I asked, does BBC Sherlock feel nostalgic? And I gave uh, all 61 responses three options. Yes, the entire show does. Not at all. Or only certain episodes do feel nostalgic. And for the first option, that is yes, it does. It took up 23%. Not at all took 29.5%. And the last one, only certain episodes do feel nostalgic, took up 47.5%. That is 29 out of 61 responses, which is, which is a lot. Yeah. So this next question, I asked those who said yes, the entirety of BBC Sherlock do feel nostalgic. I asked them, so why is it nostalgic to you? Oh, and by the way, there are only 14 of them who said yes, the entire show is nostalgic. And this is what I drew up. Most people said that it is nostalgic because it is part of their childhood or this is their past and that they watch this with someone else. Yeah, time, time just makes memories sweeter. Then I also asked those who said only certain episodes do feel nostalgic uh, about why it feels nostalgic. But first, I gave them another chart to fill on which episodes gave them that nostalgic feeling. And it looks almost identical to what is your favorite episode? Study in Pink takes the top. And then Hounds of Baskerville takes second place. Well, almost second place. It, it, it shares the spot with the great game. But again, again, again. Wee! Downwards. Downwards hill. Just the chart goes downhill. I feel bad for this show. And then I asked, please explain why it gives you a sense of nostalgia. And similar to the previous question to those who said the entirety of the show feels nostalgic. Uh, number one, those are the only enjoyable ones. Number two, Ayo season one and season two is Bay. And number three, younger audience. <laughs> Nostalgia, okay. Big chunky memories in the far past just taste sweeter when you think about it now and number four they've seen better shit pre-season four and season four because it's such a sour taste season one two and three it feels amazing to remember that is what i'm getting at from these responses yeah Hello, Fufu from the future here. I'm exhausted. I just finished editing practically everything. I left out one question and that is, did this show lead you to experiencing other versions of Sherlock Holmes, such as other adaptations or the canon itself? 68.3% said yes, 31.7% said no. I was expecting a majority yes, but I was expecting a lot more because 31.7% of people who said no is a lot of people. That's that's my only opinion of it. Like I was expecting like maybe 80% said yes. Cause like I do know a lot of people in the BBC Sherlock community going on like, oh well this this is so like the canon. Ooh, you know? Now, a lot of people, perhaps there's a bias because I did ask the server 
<laughs> that does hate BBC Sherlock as well. And a lot of responses did say, Oh, Granada Holmes is the best thing in the world. Jeremy Brett, my baby. And there is also a lot of people who are like, Ew, RDJ Holmes is disgusting. Um, I mean, I totally get why they don't really like RDJ Holmes. It is not for everyone. It is man-baby film taste. But I like the man-baby film taste, but I also do really like Granada Holmes. A lot of people do say like, oh, Granada Sherlock is more accurate and original than Benedini Cumberbini. However, Benedini Cumberbini he made his own version of Sherlock Holmes, which is pretty cool. And I totally agree that Benedini Cumberbini, I should stop calling him Benedini Cumberbini, Jesus Christ, is pretty cool. Like, he did make his own Sherlock Holmes. But the way it strays off from the character, like, he became a goddamn asshole. I don't think that's his fault, okay? But I still do think he did a great job, and I think it's pretty neat that he made the character his own. Um, Jerry Brett also did something similar. I'm going a bit off track, but yeah, Jerry Brett also did something similar where he's like, oh yeah, let's make our, my own headcanons. Like, hey, maybe he does this and nah, like he's a bit, you know, insomniac, haha. <laughs> okay, okay, so, 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 what if, what if? What if the gays, you know, think Holmes is gay? Haha, <laughs> whatever, if it pleases the gays, I'm thrilled. Like, I love that quote for him, like, it's perfect. I love it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. A thank you especially to everyone who participated in this questionnaire. And thank you to Teddy for helping me out in the ableism parts. Anyways, good night, y'all.